Hello, friends. I'm Art, and this is Tony. Tony. We are from Garden, Garden Masters, Masters with, with a Z. Z. Dot com. That's and, correct. And today, we are bringing in our tropical plants from our deck and from our outdoor area because it is fall. Can you see the leaves behind us? It is fall, and it is now time to bring in those plants so we can bring them out again next year. Right, Art? That's right. All right. We got to bring in all those summer-loving plants that we don't grow around here. We're going to try to put them into a semi-tropical holding area. <laughs> is and that I, what you call our basement? Well, it is pretty uh, pretty <laughs> chilly, but anyways. They seem to survive. We've been doing this for years. They survive every year. We bring them back out, and that's how we can create this tropical paradise outside for very little money each year because... We use the same plants and it works out very well. So let's show you what we have. So folks, here's some of our summer tropicals. This one here is a ginger plant. We bring it in every year. It dies back quite a bit during the winter. In fact, when we bring it back out, we look at it and say, and Tony always says this, it's time to get rid of it. Because it looks pretty bad when we bring it out. But look how full it is at the end of the season. Just beautiful. So, right? Yep. Yep. So these, these palm trees we have had for probably around... 12 to 15 years. Oh, really? I was going to say more like 8 to 10, but whatever. So, well, let's just say 10 to 12. Then. And Art, I'm pulling back so people can get an idea of how tall they have grown in that time. Look, at that's the second story window up there. How will we get these into a one-story basement? Very carefully. So... We brought a couple plants in last weekend because we just bought a new palm because these are just kind of spindly, but we like the height. So the palm that we brought in already is very wide and shorter, and we'll have to show that to you as well. Now, we've had these pot or plants all these years. We've repotted them into a little bit of a larger pot. But when I did that, the pot diameter is only um, maybe a couple inches wider. I didn't even find many roots in that area. It wasn't like they were all root bound. So you can have a very small pot for a large plant. So palms, our ginger plant. What else do we have, Art? So over here is all the summer annuals. That are going to go. These are going to die when. Frost. Yep, the frost is going to hit all these. Not bringing so, any of these in. The Dracaena in the center. I like adding some house plants to um, our summer summer annuals. They add interest. Uh, these flowers were a, sort of a red. Well, right now they're showing pink it or yeah or orange I should say, but they really complemented uh, the Dracaena. Geraniums, they're done. You can Gerani overwinter those, but we do not. The cana lily. Yes, the cana lily. What we do here is sometimes after the frost hits it, we'll cut all the stems down to the pot. We'll bring the pot inside the house, not inside of a garage, not inside of a shed, but inside the house. Where it's warmer. Where it's warmer because you... If it's out where it's going to freeze, those bulbs are going to turn into mush. They sort of look like sweet potatoes. Anyways, but I think this year, because we got more plants, we're just going to pull it out of the pot and save the bulbs, put it in a dark area, and overwinter it, and then next year we'll replant them. Okay, headed down this way. Seeing you what know, else we got house here. Houseplant, another houseplant fern. fern, pretty. This um, 
this Rubellini palm, that'll come inside for the winter. Uh, begonia is gone. Vinca summer annual will be gone. Um, we actually have a begonia over there that's very interesting. Love this begonia. It's actually not looking very good anymore, is it? Yeah, or, it's it gotten... It sat in that pot with water. We've had a lot of rain this uh, fall, so... But we'll bring it back in, and next summer it'll be lush and full again. Now, the croton here, actually, you can overwinter it, but our light conditions at our place is not good enough, and um, the leaves will end up just dropping a little. Yeah, it time. needs quite a bit of sun. It's a very tropical so, plant. What's, anyway. what's in it underneath there is just a summer annual. Yes, yes. So that's gone. That's gone. So over here we have the uh, Mandavia. That'll just go by the wayside for the winter. Again, you can overwinter these. We've done it a few times, but we don't have a lot of light. And, and um, it doesn't do real well in the winter, so we just... And it takes forever for it to start blooming. It sure again. does. So... Now they're Dracaena here. Now this is this, a large one. This Dracaena, believe it or not, was actually in that basket that uh, on the railing over there one year. This is the second year past its planting over there. You can see how large it's gotten. Now, so we're going to bring that in. So that'll come in. Boston ferns, we buy several of them. They need some light the right conditions you can overwinter them but they become messy when they're very messy in. very very messy i know some people like to bring them in but um we just don't want to uh deal with the mess it's the choice between buying new ones or dealing with the mess and we prefer to buy new ones these are called um gold thread cypress and these are outdoor shrubs that will survive the winter planted in the ground in our zone of seven or so. But these are in pots. So the question is, will they survive the winter or won't they? What say you, Art? Well, they've been in the pots for a couple years now. I think actually it's second or third season. They really should go in the garden. Sometimes when you have a real cold winter, the pots will freeze and you'll end up losing your plants. Um, this year, we'll probably, we'll call it heal them in, just get them into the edge of the ground, I mean, into the top of the ground, not planting them, but just so um, they'll be partly in the ground so they won't die over the winter. So it, it's interesting to note, in case you don't know this, when you have plants that are above ground, the air that surrounds the pot causes the pot to freeze. If you plant them in the ground, it kind of insulates the pot from the freezing weather, so it's more likely to survive that way. So we have another palm over there, which will take the annuals out of the bottom of the pot and over overwinter that palm as well. So these plants are called elephant ears. They're a summer bulb that we put in. Um, they get very large, as you can see by my hand, how big they are. Now, these plants, we don't pot them up and bring them in. Uh, we'll let the frost hit the top of them, and then we'll cut them back to the ground and dig the bulbs out. Now, mind you, there's two plants here, two bulbs only. That's a plant. This is a plant. And look how big these are. I'm I'm always fascinated by elephant ears. Their leaves are, look like elephant ears, and they're so huge. You can hardly see art behind them. And that's only two plants. You can clearly see them on this view right here. And they're also neat because um, I feel that they're kind of tropical. Yeah, I do, I do too. And, you know, with a spa around you, I think they fit in well. So we'll wait a couple more weeks till we get the frost, then we'll do that part but today we're concentrating on the tropicals and mind you tropical plants palms and so forth they really don't like going under 45 degrees 
sometimes we stretch it thinking oh we just want the plants out a little longer and it has gotten down into the upper 30s but they really prefer 45 degrees and higher and you know also they really don't like the shock of coming inside so that's why a lot of times when we bring in our tropicals they kind of go down at first and eventually they come back somewhat you know they're never going to be as nice in our conditions inside as they are outside because we don't have a lot of light in the basement but we have just enough to get them by until the next spring this year we're going to experiment with Grow lights. And you'll see that in a future video. Note to self, five pots with a lift that you can lift easily. So one thing to keep in mind with these tall palms is they have a small root base, small pot. We always have to tie them to the house because you get, you know, 10, 15 mile an hour winds or higher and the plants are going to topple over. Well, a couple years ago, we decided to buy these large green pots, which also help stabilize them. But we decided we were still going to plant the plants, the palms, in these plastic pots and set them inside. Because there's no way in heck that we you could say ever <laughs> be able to lift that plant and these pots together. It would have been... Pots are almost as heavy as that pot of dirt. Oh, I think the pot itself is heavier than the plant. So another little trick you can do, do something like this, it helps stabilizes the plant and it makes it look prettier because who wants a plastic pot on their patio? And we had planned on putting some something in the plastic pot, planting it to cover it up, maybe an asparagus fern or something like that, but we never got to it. So here's what we have now. Now the next step is we want to get rid of the summer annuals that are in here because those, they would just die inside. So we're going to clip those back. These are New Guinean patients. So I'm just going to kind of clip them back. They might come back next year. That's why we're not digging them out. Who knows? Now these, this is a begonia and over here, we have an asparagus fern. Now these may come back because the begonias are known to come back and the asparagus ferns definitely come back. So we are not going to clip those out at this point. I think this is probably a dead asparagus fern here. I'm not sure. So um, might leave it in or might not. Cut anyway, it off. Cut it off. Okay. Cut it off. So that's this plant. There's another plant over here. This Dracaena here has, I don't know if anybody can recognize these, these are petunias, and these will more than likely not come back, they just pulled right out. So one thing to note on these petunias, we did not plant those petunias oh, yeah, in yeah. there. They just we, had, we had purple petunias in another pot, and apparently the birds, you know, have transported the seeds into this, so mid-season, we had purple petunias. Purple petunias, everyone. Great. About for... to go frost. <laughs> Great Halloween color. Oh, yeah. Halloween. So these are all the plants that need to go inside. Some of them were already inside, but we brought them out because we're going to be spraying them now, which we'll show you in just a minute. But these, this is our driveway. 
And these are all the plants. And if you come in here, this is where they're gonna go. Now this used to be a two car garage, but it was turned into a family room before we bought the house. This is the area where all these plants are gonna go. Now, as we said, you wanna make sure you get the tops and the bottoms. And you also want to get the stems and the soil. So that's basically it. I usually do it until it starts dripping. And then we know how to get covered. How often should you do, uh, how, how long before you bring them in should you do this up? I usually wait till it dries, you know. Um, we have three plants over there, the large palm, the wide palm, and the two banana trees. Now, they've been in the house um, a couple for about weeks. a week, yeah. Yeah, a couple weeks yeah. now, and I'm going to spray those, but I'm going to make sure I get them inside tonight because they're used to like 65 degree temperature, and it might get down in the upper 40s tonight. I don't want to take a chance, but these have been out. They haven't been in yet, so yeah, they, they haven't been, you so know. So I'm going to leave these out probably till tomorrow morning so they thoroughly dry. Um, they don't really feel, it all, it, it all matters of whatever we feel like or get done. Oh dear, what are we going to do? I can't reach the top. Tony, would you bring in the bucket truck? <laughs> we don't, we don't. How we, about if I bring it down to you? We don't have a bucket truck. Oh, this oh, will no. work. Oh, this no. Oh, no. I'm grabbing this it. I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing it. So here is the area with all the plants brought in. You can see it's quite extensive, but it only takes up part of the basement. And we're going to, for the first time, get some grow lights and put them on these plants to see how well they grow. Because even though the doors in the background look light uh, in the picture, they don't get much light onto the plants because not a lot of sun gets in those and the plants really need some more light. So we're going to try grow lights this year and watch for that video because it will be on our channel. Just search for grow lights and you'll find it. And there you have it, bringing outdoor plants inside for the winter.